So now let's change the shape of the center of the pillar. We want to isolate this area, so what we're going to do is mask it off. We'll hold down the control key and click from the canvas onto the model to draw this square mask. Once we've done that, we'll invert it by holding down control and tapping on the canvas. Now in the tool palette, let's open up our deformations pull down. What we're going to be adjusting is the size slider. You notice in this slider that we have the options of clicking X, Y, or Z. Now because of the way that we set up this cube, we're actually going to turn off Z and only work with X and Y. But depending on how you set up your cube, you might get a different result if you do this. So you have to play with your X, Y, Z settings and see which two are going to give you a scale in from the sides and the front. So we'll clear our mask by holding control and click dragging an empty area of the canvas. We'll hold control and drag a mask over the bottom of the pillar and invert that like we did earlier. Now we'll press the W key so that we can get an action line and transpose the bottom of the pillar to make it a bit longer. What you want to do is actually click on the bottom of the pillar and then drag your action line out to the canvas. While you're doing this you can hold the shift key so that you draw a straight line. It's also important that you drag from the pillar out to the canvas. This way it'll keep the same parallel line with the surface of your actual pillar. Now we'll click in the center circle of the action line and pull that down. We'll hold control and click and drag inside the canvas to clear that mask. So let's continue adding detail to the center of this pillar. Once again press G to jump into Projection Master. And this time we'll uncheck Normalize. This will minimize the amount of distortion that we have in our projection. And then we'll click Drop Now. This time we're actually going to be using the single layer brush. Last time we used a simple brush and this won't work for what we're going to try to do. So I'll show you an example here with a simple brush. If we use the drag rectangle and a square alpha with a simple brush and try to draw in this square, once we duplicate it and move it down across the surface, you're going to kind of get an overlay effect, a bit of a stair stepping that we don't want. So you can see here with a few duplications, which is again Shift S, we kind of get too many of those stacked on top of each other. What we want is a nice square cut along the length of the surface. So with the single layer brush and Z sub turned on, we'll duplicate this with Shift S. And then with the move manipulator, we'll push that down a little bit. And you'll notice now we don't get that overlay. We get a nice clean cut at one single layer. So again, we'll hold Shift S and keep duplicating that. And with the move, We'll slide that down, press G to jump back into a 3D state, and you can see we get a nice, great cut into our surface. So again, we'll press the letter G, jump back into Projection Master, drop now, and what we're going to do is import an alpha, and you can find these alphas in any uh, libraries online, or you might have your own, and we're going to use this alpha to create some really detailed sculpting into this surface. So we'll select kind of this pattern here, and Go ahead and click open and that'll import directly into our alpha palette. Let's go ahead and dock the alpha palette over on the right hand side here so that we can get quick access to some of the settings. So we'll use the drag rectangle to draw this into the surface and then just like we did earlier we will move and scale and adjust this stroke along the surface to get it to fit inside the pillar just right. Inside our alpha palette you notice that we have a blur option we might want to tune that just a little bit so we don't get such a sharp crispy edge. We'll get a little bit more of a natural carving into the surface. And of course adjusting our intensity will help make this a little bit more natural. Again if we press Shift S we can duplicate that stroke and adjust it across the surface. Now with these fine details there's a little bit of trial and error here so you might want to try different combinations. You might want to just undo all of that and then kind of start over and uh, play with your size a little bit, the rotation and the scale, giving you a ton of control over what you do. So again, Shift S, we'll duplicate this, and then we'll reposition it to the bottom of our pillar here. And that looks pretty good. So we'll press G to pick it up, and then you'll notice that again is projected onto our model in this 3D state. So you can see how easy it is to use Projection Master to really have control over some of the details you're placing onto your model. At this point you're going to want to save this out because what we're going to be doing is putting all these pieces that we're building together into a final composite here inside ZBrush.